today's program, now that we're, we're uh, getting those announcements, and they're important announcements out of the way, uh, is, is about Pigeon Forge Historical Markers. How many of you, do, do any of you have the book, the little historical markers book that the state of Tennessee put out? It's about three inches wide, maybe, and about nine or ten inches tall, and hard to thumb through, but it's got, you know, every marker there, and indexed in you know, half a dozen ways, so you can find about any marker. If there's a marker within 10 miles, you, you can find the indexes in that book. Well, uh, but you're going to want to find out more about those markers. You know, there's a paragraph of information on them. Well, there's a world of information on that. So today we're going to listen to Marcia Nelson and, Christina. and Christina Wolfenbarger, and they're going to tell us a lot about those markers, particularly those in Spiegel. We welcome you. Thank Give you. them a hand. Uh, Mr. Fowler and I had started talking uh, a few weeks ago and we told him that we had done some wilderness presentations, um, wilderness wildlife presentations, and he said, What have you done? And we said, Well, one of them was the Pigeon Forge uh, historic markers that the library uh, uh, put together. So he said, Would you like to come do that? And we were like, Sure, we would love to come do that. So that is what. Wow. Talk louder. Talk louder, gotcha. Wow, nobody ever tells me that. <laughs> that was telling me to tone it down. Um, so we decided to, uh, we were happy to come and share this with you all. Um, Pigeon Forge, my predecessor was Vita King, which I'm sure a lot of you know Vita well. Um, she was just a force um, full of knowledge. I just wish I could download her brain. Uh, but she retired, and um, I came in on the tail end of the project that she did, the Markers Project. So Marsha uh, Husky is our director here at the library in Pigeon Forge, and I'm the historian. So she's gonna, she was there for the entire time period, which it took several years to get this actually accomplished, get them created, the content, the locations, permissions, everything, get them printed and installed. So this was a long-term uh, project, and Vita just had such great vision, and Marsha as well, and the city of Pigeon Forge to, uh, to let us do this. So we kind of did this brochure in mind with tourists uh, in mind. Of course, locals can do it too. You know where you're going. Uh, we get quite a large amount of tourists in the Pigeon Forge Library, and we accomplish lots of things for them. We print off Dollywood tickets. We have had people, their, their house is sold while they're been on vacation. They need a notary, and they've got to sign you know, documents for really, it's just, it's crazy the stuff that we do, passport uh, facility. So we do a lot of things for tourists that people don't really realize in Pigeon Forge. And so this driving brochure is kind of um, got the tourist driver in mind as far as locations and the order to go in. So we're gonna kind of tailor that, um, our presentation to the uh, driving brochure and then um, we'll get started with that. First thing I want to tell you is that we started back in 2012. It was Vita King's idea, and she came to me and we talked about um, doing some markers. And I will be honest, when I think of a historical marker, I think of those gray, hard -to ones that have been around here forever. And Vita said, no, 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 let me show you some pictures of these. So she showed me some pictures of some pretty cool markers. So we decided, well, if we're going to do them, buddy, we're going to do them right. We looked into the thought of going through the state versus us paying for them ourselves. And since we are in a situation with the city where we're blessed to be able to do that, we um, first, there's, you can't read it, I know, but here's a letter to Arlene where we first broached the subject with our city manager about doing it. And then the next thing I think is a, um, the letter to, well, this is the, this is a, this is a uh, comparison of what you'd have to do to go through the state. And they might take your proposal or they might not or whether if we did it ourselves, how we would do it. So this is something we presented to the city and to the commission. And then I think next is a letter that we uh, sent to the commission, the commissioners, and they approved. And I'll tell you what's really funny. Vita and I thought this would be four or five markers a year, a couple of years would be done. The very first thing she said was, she said, now, we want to do, you know, the ironworks, how Pigeon Forge got its name. We want to do, um, uh, where Park and the elephants, went into the zoo. The very last one we finally did 10 years later had Ware Park on it. <laughs> yeah, Fort Ware, I'm sorry, Fort Ware, because the last one we did was the attractions. But we had that in our mind all the time. But we soon found out 
with the amount of research you have to do because once it's truly set in stone, you want it to be as accurate as it can absolutely be. You guys all get that. Some people don't get that. You guys know. You are our people. You know. So to do the research that Vita mostly did, to do all the proofing that we all did, all the editing, you know, get the permissions, we realized three a year was really good. We did Fort Ware first, um, which is right behind the library. Um, we did um, the Ironworks, Pigeon Forge Railroad. That was in 2012 and 13. And that was pretty ambitious, we thought. That's what we did. The next year we did Broadway Dairy, Pigeon Forge Canning in the elementary school, and Henderson Springs Resort. Then the next year, 14 and 15, we did Early Pigeon Forge, Pigeon Forge Baptist Church. 15 and 16, we did Middle Creek Methodist and um, the Academy and Pigeon Forge Methodist, I'm sorry, in the Academy. And then the last year was 16 and 17. We finally did the Pigeon Forge Attractions, which was the funnest one to do, and Pine Grove Community, which was very fun for me, which I'll tell you why later. But Christine and I have realized that when I think history, I think of that first picture we had up there, that old mail cart, you know, back when. But when we go talk to people, whether it's Rotary, whether it's here, what people like, it's what you remember. The reason Pine Grove is important to me because I grew up there. The reason the attractions are so fun is because we remember them when we were kids. And so I realized a few years ago, I don't think I'm that old, but they made an American Girl doll that was born the year I was born. <laughs> I was like, I'm officially historical now. I'm officially old. So I'm old enough to remember some of these things. And y'all remember some of them too. Um, so, and... Pine Grove was the very last one we did, but on our driving brochure, it's the first one. And you can see we were so specific with traffic light numbers, with, um, we didn't do GPS, but, you know, right, east, north, south, whatever, exactly how someone not familiar with our area would know how to follow this. And it starts on this end of town. Now, I'm just for my benefit, who knows where Pine Grove is? One, two, three. Are you serious? See, when I did this at Wilderness, me, my mom, my dad, like one other person was in there because nobody knows. Okay, when you go into Pigeon Forge on the right side of the road where the big Tennessee State Bank is in Sonic, Henderson Chapel Baptist Church, you go down that neighborhood. I grew up in that neighborhood. That was called Pine Grove. My address growing up was Route 4 Pine Grove, Sevierville, Tennessee. And it was its own little world it's own well a hundred years ago a hundred years ago yeah, yeah, yeah. not, not in my memory back at the beginning <laughs> but a hundred years own, ago it was its own and so we outlined the history of the pine grove community on that on this marker and that's why it's first because we're taking you into town from Sevierville, meandering around and coming back down around this way so that is how your driving brochure is laid out not at all in the way that we created the markers and this is but, actually what you're looking for if you want to take the driving tour this yep. is what the actual marker looks like. Yeah. So and this this is special to me because I grew up at Peterson Chapel Church when I was little. I stood out here in the cemetery and had my Kool-Aid and cookies on those big tombstones <laughs> for Bible school. And um, my growing as I was growing up, preacher T. Lee Ormby, who was a park ranger also, by vocational pastor, he was my preacher and his wife, Norbell, the most godly woman probably I've ever known. She's in this picture that Vita dug up from I think Miss Agnes, I can't remember now, but I'm obviously not going to tell you what's on the marker. You're welcome to go out and look at the marks I want you to. We're just going to tell you the process of how we created them and what we did. So, so the first one you'd come to on the tour there is Pine Grove. The next one would be just behind the library for where. I like this because um, from where my office is, if I'm walking down the hall and I look out the back door or the back window, I can see that marker. And um, we have the best parks and recs and landscape people in Pigeon Forge. We're just so blessed. And so they're trying to make them attractive and have some flowers. So this has got the really nice knockout roses around them. And, but I can see people pull off the side of the road and look at that one. It always just we makes me that. so happy. Because Fort Ware actually was back there. Yeah, Where everything is exactly tennis courts are located. as closely as possible. It's what we're talking about. Really Where did. it's located. We save some piece of part of Fort Ware. Yes, well, there are some pieces of it. That's a whole different thing. Yeah, I was like, that's a whole yeah. different thing. Yeah. But there are. There are they some exist. pieces of it. You guys may know more about it than we do. And actually, we do know who has. Jerry Ware has loaned us some pieces that were in the Pigeon Forge, um, the Welcome Center right next to Smoky Mountain Opry, that Welcome Center that's closed right there. 
we were, uh, he very generously allowed us to take those to the Pigeon Forge Library, so I considered that a great honor. I yeah. love that. So we have them in a case in the lobby li uh, of the library, and there are some pieces from the home that Colonel Ware built there. Um, some pieces from the fort, there's some bricks from the fort, and some iron pieces, there's a cup, there's some tools, all of those are made at the old mill in Pigeon Forge. So if you all ever are, are in our neck of the woods, please come by anytime, whether I'm there or not, there's a little QR code you can scan with your cell phone right there and read all about all of the information, um, and I'm working on printed material too for that. Um, Am for I them. correct that that marker is where they have the the old graveyard yes. monument? The yes. the uh, uh, it's right on the that area, yes. right? Sure, exactly. Okay. Right. Sure is. Yes. 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 And you may not know, if you look on the internet and you look at those names, it shows the old graveyards with the stones, which are no longer no. there. you have any idea where the stones went to? I do not. I think Jerry would be good to ask about that. He would. He would. I bet he would. would. Yeah. Just wondered. Yeah, yeah, I do not know. We would love to to get more aware. Same place the stones at the fork the river down here to Bearwell way. Somebody picked them up, hauled them off. Could be. Yeah. The third one on your list there, and I'll, this is am I wrong? This is on our website too. Are we on our? The next one you come to is Henderson Springs Resort, which it's older than any of us can remember. Um, but it's the next one on your um, list there, and it's fascinating. And I know that. The pretty lady in the hat is related to Mr. Kerr sitting back here. So there's something special about every one of these almost. I think that somebody in the library or somebody staying in the library had some kind of connection. Because, I mean, if you're from Sevier County, as Gwen Cody once told me, the gene pool is very small. You know, it's very shallow, <laughs> those first few families. Um, but the Henderson Springs, it is not in the most attractive location, but it is in the accurate location, as close as we could get it to where it was. And we also um, did a little history there about Battle Hill, since it's right there. That's where the marker is crossing Battle Hill. And it is an easy place to pull off and stop and read it. It's just not landscaped and the prettiest thing you've ever seen. And you know Henderson Spring Resort, y'all have heard of that? Where they used to come from the Mineral Springs? Is that on the JL Road? No. No, it's in Pigeon Forge. It's right in the middle, right in Pigeon Forge, right off of Where's Valley Road. Off of Where's Valley. Oh, that's us see yeah. Oh, you're talking about I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So this, to me, in my mind, is kind of one of the first tourism mm -hmm. spots in Pigeon Forge. Um, people would come from all around. Yeah. And yeah. they said they had a as good a springs as doctoring. So if you were sick, you could get their water, mm -hmm. take a vacation here, and they seemed they seemed to help. And uh, like a tourist place, people. they had entertainment, they had they music, did. they had games, they had stuff going on. You could on. go hunting. And you can read all about that in this little microscopic screen right here. And really, you see the, <laughs> the only thing that really closed it down really was the Great Depression. I <laughs> thought of this when you were talking to, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with Historical Marker Database online. Yes. I was not familiar with that until we started this project and I find it fascinating. And oh, I have put, I, <laughs> I put every one of these on there. They're so all they're all on there. Yeah, so you can read. You can see the close up of what it looks like and the whole, you know, thing too. So, yeah. um, I say, I, I got to a point where every one we did, I went, oh, this is my favorite. I love this. I also, because I wasn't looking at that close, I do want to give credit. One of the things we did when we first started was we hired a graphic designer and he created our logo that we try to put on every historical thing we have. It's this little logo right back here. Oh, well, it's on the front and the back. Yeah, but it has the iron and um, has and uh, that is actually our assistant library director. That is her brother, and that's not why we hired him. She was not our assistant library director then. He's just really good at what he did. But he created that logo. We went through a couple of variations of it before we settled on these colors and what this looked like. And he's the one who designed. After we would give him these mountains of information and stuff of what we wanted. He's the one that would design them and make them come to life and look beautiful. And almost every one of them has something that almost pops out and looks like 3D. And on this one, it's that Coke bottle, that um, um, Pigeon Forge bottling. Yeah, I was gonna say pop bottle, soda bottle. It's not a Coke, I know, but yeah, from the bottling plant. So I love, his name is Adam Phelps, and I truly wanna give him credit um, for making these, the beautiful markers that they are, and just not old, ugly, old fashioned, gray looking things. But uh, Pigeon Forge growth of the small town is, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, don't know. I'm, I assume people know, but of course Pigeon Forge started right around the old mill. So half of these are then a quarter, a third of a mile, half a mile of each other right there. 
And so this one, we talk about the bottling plant, we talk about um, yeah, rolling stores, the mill. I know you can't see this picture of the old mill here, but the funny thing about this picture of the mill, obviously it doesn't have a, the wheel on it. And my dad um, has worked at the mill for going on 30 years now as the miller. Now he just fries cornbread on the front porch. But um, if you talk to him or people his age, they'll say, well, the wheel has not been there most of our life. Tourists always think of that wheel being there. But it's not been there, and it's not there in this picture. And the other thing that I think is interesting about this picture of the old mill from the early 1900s is you have the building where the mill is. You have this wing here where the general store is now. It's two stories in this picture. I don't know what happened to the second story, but it's never been there in my 60 years that I remember. But anyway, I love this one. I, as we, talk about the, we talk about several of the small businesses that were right there when Kitchen Forge was a very new early the town. industry that we did have was located there, and we, had a, we had a bottling company there. We had a, um, a coffin a maker. Canning. We, think. we had a coffin maker. We had a canning facility there. So they would blow the whistle, and the women who lived in Pigeon Forge knew that it was time to come in because they just had a load of vegetables come in to be canned. So that's kind of some of the very first industry. And if you look at the background, uh, I incorporated the Pigeon Forge canning label. Yeah, love that. We one. have one of those scanned into our archives uh, in Pigeon Forge, and that's what this background is. Is one of the labels, and this yeah. is one of the bottles from the canning uh, factory. Yeah. And they had some weird flavors. I mean, they, they had We've got them stuff. on there. We have some on there that were like cherry. Yes, yeah, so they had some normal ones, but they had some really weird ones too that we yeah. were not. I sure. can't remember them, but I can't read it. It's too small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, so that, that's right here across the street from the old mill by the, used to be the gallery, now it's the winery. It's right there. It's very easy That little Jim Gray building that yeah, used to yeah. be Jim Gray it's building. It's very easy right to block and see this one. I mean, we it's have, easy, but it's easy. We have several markers kind of in that location. That's what I just said, because that's where town was. Yeah. So Out of the 12, several. six of them are probably running around here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the one near the little, the old Jim Gray yeah. building. And this is actually... The first one we did. I don't think it's listed first in 12 and 13, but it is because I remember when we had our big unveiling and the paper came and all that. The ironworks, of course, it's right behind the old mill. We've actually had to move this a few feet over the years because of, you know, progress, but still. Um, this is not my favorite because it's the most technical out of all of them. It just doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't have as many, you know, personal stuff because it was so long ago. Nobody remembers it. But it is very interesting. We have the Cherokee name for Pigeon Forge, and we explain how Pigeon Forge got its name. And, and so um, that is the very first one we did back in 2012. It explains the ironworks. Yeah. And there's one of the original hammers from the mill. Um, and just lots of, lots of good information on there. Yeah. This also is right there in that same vicinity. I think this looks a little better now. I think I took this picture right when it was a brand new but <laughs> you still could see where the hell we've been doing. This one, um, the elementary school and the canning factory, it also has been moved because of progress, because of the new trolley station that has just been built. But it's still just a few feet away, and it's on the walking trail at Patriot Park. You just have to park at that big parking lot and just walk a few steps down on that end of it uh, to get to that one. And um, that has the label on it. It has it. It talks about um, how Pigeon Forge became. Their colors became orange and black. I mean, this is a really. It's a really cool one. Really Do y'all know how the colors became orange and black? No. no. Oh. Because they had a basketball team. That was, you know, Pigeon Forge basketball team has always been good through the years. They were known they for were basketball. Always good, and yep. they died. The women like gathered pieces the moms. together. The moms got together and died. The fabric dyed the shirts orange, took old black felt hats, and cut the numbers and cut out the numbers and put them on shirts. And that's how they got <laughs> so the that's how they became orange and black. And to this yeah. day, I tried to tell my ten-year-old grandson that I thought that was one thing he might like, since he's a Pigeon Forge Tiger now, and plays basketball. There you go. So, yeah, I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. Why did they pick orange to dye it? I don't know why they had that orange dye. It doesn't say. I don't think Vita knew. I, I that's just. The, I don't know. I do what they had know. access to. <laughs> had what they had, yeah. Had what they had. I'm sure that's what they just happened to have. Um, oh, the Middle Creek uh, Methodist Church and Settlement. You know, I've just grown up knowing there's a pretty little church over there. I knew nothing about the history of the settlement, the camp things they used to have, the school and stuff. So there's a lot of information on this. I love the pictures of this, too. I love the picture that this was inside. Its own little community, too. It was like Pine Grove. It was a very vibrant, big community back in its time. So, and I, I guarantee nobody that comes here on vacation knows that. Most people that live here don't know that. We don't have it on there, but they had a train depot station, right? In Middle Creek? Uh, mm, 
they had a what? Train. I don't depot. I don't know. Creek. I'm not going to say because I don't. I've seen yeah. it at that picture, but it's on. It's on something else. It's not. It's not on this one. Um, I like that this is located. I think that church is, you know, very well known for its beautiful cemetery. Lots of, lots of um, services going up there. And so to go to that cemetery, you got to drive right by this because it's right there in front of the church on the main drag. So it's very easy to see. You know, to get to. Um, I don't know who took some of these pictures. I mean, this was just a cool one. Oh, this Pigeon Forge Baptist Church, or as we know it today, First Baptist Church. This marker is up across from the um, the golf course, right there at the beginning of the cemetery, looking over it, which is where the church began. I love this picture. Um, we have a ground breaking in 50, I forgot what year, 50 something, where they broke ground for where the church is today. And um, for the new one. 54, maybe so. I sort of say you probably can read it from there. And I love this picture on top of it of the first old church that was there. I just think it's lovely. And if you grew up here as I did in Pigeon Forge, um, I, we never called him pastor or minister. I didn't go to church there, but I knew about Preacher Cope all my life because Mrs. Cope was my eighth grade science teacher, taught school with my mom in Sevierville, and Preacher Cope was just always around. So we've got a picture of him, we've got a quote from him because he was there for like 25 or 30 years. and. A lot of people my age remember him from their childhood, and we have a list also of the Methodist Church too. We have a list of every pastor they had throughout the years until these markers were done. 1956. 1956. For $25,000 was the land wow. on the parkway. Um, there. Is there anything else on this one? I don't think so. I think when they broke the ground, this is like the oldest member, the youngest member, and some other people. But anyway, I, this is this is interesting. I'm sure a lot of people don't know that that's where it started and why that cemetery is up there. Across from the golf course and no church up there because that's where the Baptist Church was. And then as you continue to drive, the next thing you come to is Pigeon River Railroad. I remember when Adam did this one. I just went, look at this map that just pops off of here. Look at this big railroad spike. It looks pretty. There's where the depot is. That's the depot. That's picture. Picture. I'm going to tell you something funny about this marker. It is not in a pretty location. And that is a testament to the fact that we tried to be as historically accurate as we could as to where this was, regardless of what's there today. And the funniest thing is that Vita gathered up some old Pigeon Forge residents at the time, including my dad, who was probably 75 then. I remember Jim Trotter was one of them. And I sat, and she got a trolley driver, and we drove back here. Because if you think about where this is, this is across from Cowway Campground. It is actually in a substation. There is no way to make this pretty. This is not a pretty spot to put this historical marker. But it's accurate. But that is where the depot was. And if you think about it, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, we did not have Teaster Lane. We did not have no. Veterans Boulevard. We did not have that intersection. So she got those old men and put them in a trolley, and we drove over there. And she said, now, where was this? What do you remember about this? Where did this road come from? And they they everyone had a different opinion. <laughs> but it was so funny. I didn't, I, I don't know if I didn't have a cell phone. Surely I had one 10 years ago, but I must not have had it with me. I would have hit record and I would have recorded those little old men back there talking because it was funny. But um, this, it, it's just a beautiful marker and um, I really like it in spite of the fact, and Cindy's tried, she's tried to landscape around stuff a little bit. We had some big plans for a fence and stuff, but, but it too is easy to get to. It's easy. Just watch the traffic come off Dollywood Lane when you're pulling in and out of there. <laughs> but like I say, that's a testament to just trying to be accurate, not trying to put it, you know, someplace else. And it's, I've been just completely fascinated with the fact that Pigeon Forge had uh, a, a railroad, train, a yeah. train going right up through town mm -hmm. and into yep, the slow and easy. Which yeah, was and in the last the few years, spur, I've heard spur. about it, like Carol has written about it, and different people. Mm -hmm. But you know, to when Vita about, first started talking about this, I mean, really. I went to Carson Newman, and I remember hearing the train. This was the first time I'd ever heard the train at night that woke me up because I wasn't used to it. Because in my lifetime, it didn't happen. It wouldn't have a train up going through Pigeon Forge. So I thought this was really interesting. So there's the Middle Creek Depot picture that I was talking yeah. about earlier. The Middle yeah. Creek had its own little depot for the yeah. train station there. So it was just a neat little community. Yeah, it really was. And honest, I can't remember what book this map came out of, but this is the most gorgeous railroad map that someone just drew of all the stops all the way up and down to the parkways now. It, I, was, I love it. It's a great, it's a great one. And next you have uh, the First Methodist Church of Pigeon Forge and Pigeon Forge Academy. And it is still in the location that it pretty much always was. 
And um, just like the other two, we have a list of all the ministers that have been there up till the year that we did this. Um, it's very easy to because it's right there by Food City. You just turn right there and you can pull right up there in front of it and see it. It's very easy to see. And Broadie Dairy. Now, Broadie Dairy is a, I mean, to a tourist, it's a little off the beaten path. Unless you're going back there to that campground, you probably don't have a reason, but it's off Golf Drive, which is right off the parkway, just up past the Memphis Church a tiny little bit. Matter of fact, there's a couple of ways to get back there, but we give you very specific instructions, the easiest way to get from one to the other. And, um, it is such a neat story to read what all the whole story of their family that we've got on this marker and about his cows and why he started into the dairy farm and um, do y'all know why he started in the dairy farm? Because the first person that well one one of the one of his clients yeah, yeah. couldn't pay him in money, so they paid him with a cow. Yeah. And, and so, so he, then started he started his dairy farm. he started a dairy farm. And like this old sepia looking picture. That's just made to look that way. That's the building that's still there now. Allison King took that picture. And um, this looks like a little 3D. This is a little birth card for Dr. Brody. We've got the name blocked out, but it's a little girl, and it's 1955, and I'll just tell you, it's a big king's. <laughs> she still has <laughs> so her he little delivered card. Her. Mr. D Dr. Brody delivered her. <laughs> yeah. So, and they were missionaries in China for a while before they came here. And so, it's just, this is a. That's a wonderful story. It's a great story. It's a great story. But you would have to go look for this. You'll not see this on your way to any tourist destination, probably. I do want to take, do y'all know that back in that part of town, though, we didn't have some other things. Like in the 60s, that's where the skating rink was, mm -hmm. which I do remember. I would there was a swimming pool that I don't course. remember that must have been the 50s back there. So there have been a few things in that part of town, because it's just up from Stringtown, not too far. And then last but not least, this is the one that Christina and I got to finish after Vita retired. And I'll tell you what I think is funny about this. And when I look at it, I'm like, golly, that is so busy. There are so There's many things on that. On. Because we just, there was so much we put, one to put on it. We just packed everything into it that we could. So you want to talk about that one? Because I know this is your favorite. This is I do. It, it, favorite. it comes into my life. Yeah, I know So it does. I did grow up in a lot of this. Uh, so I actually grew up in Gatlinburg um, and went to Pi Phi and GP. So a lot of these things we would come down and visit, you know, when we would come do things. Rebel Railroad, Gold Rush Junction. Okay, no, um, wait. Who remembers, not that you've read about or seen pictures, who actually went to Rebel Railroad? Who remembers it? I knew some of you <laughs> would. Okay, I don't. I had a field trip every year from fourth grade up to Goldrush Junction. So who went to Goldrush Junction? Everybody's my <laughs> as old as I am went to Goldrush Junction. And after Goldrush Junction, or of course, Silver Dollar City. We all remember Silver Dollar City in Dollywood. But I just wondered who was here that had gone to Rebel Railroad. Yeah, Mountain, Ocean. Can I tell you something about, Mount, about Rebel Railroad? Rebel, Rebel Railroad. Yeah. Yes. I was raised, I wasn't raised, but we lived out in the Olive Branch community. There was a whole crowd of young people out there that had horses. We're out in the country, and you've got a little land, you've got your horse. The Buzz Atsley's boys had a horse, and people out there didn't have gates like we've got today. You just had logs you put across where you didn't want cattle to get out. Right. Two logs and turn a cow. Those boys had a horse, and they taught that horse. They'd walk up to the fence and kick that top rail off, Back that horse up and he jumped the fence. <laughs> boys will be boys. Boys, boys will be boys. boys. All right. When they built Rebel Railroad, one of the places they cut through the side of the hill, when the train would go up the hill, there was a place it would trip and there was a log would fall and this horse was running up by the side of the train and when that log fell, that horse jumped the train. Oh. 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 Now you talk about screaming. <laughs> Here comes this horse right beside the train and all of a sudden it just goes straight up in the air. <laughs> Everybody on the that's uncovered train, crazy. it was just like a flatbed with oh, that's right. with screams. That's right. that is crazy. <laughs> oh, that's gotta be written down somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah we need to that. Uh, the picture on here that makes me saddest is Hillbilly Village because it should just still be there. It, should yeah. still be there. it was. It was just there for. It's just always it been there. It it's was. just not there. Mountain Wave Ocean came along later. Later, uh, Magic World, all of those places. Fort Ware Game Park is just that one's also fascinating to me. That we had elephants and chimpanzees and a lot. We had a female lion tamer. Mm -hmm. That was like in the fifties. 
60s. It's, you know where it is though, where Magic World was. The big ship is still there in front of that golf course. So that was in so that location. Yeah, that's oh. always been something. Okay, let me tell my story about the, okay. My dad's first job, well, his first paid job for my, you know, not just helping somebody on the farm or something, was at Fort Ware. His job was while everybody was inside doing whatever they were doing, he was to take a bumper sticker and put on every single one of those cars in the parking lot. So when they left, it had that. Tony and he Martin said, had those too. He said he made more than one Cadillac owner mad when they came out and on their new <laughs> they had a bumper sticker. But that was his first real job for a business. I always have to take that. Yep, so this is uh, one of the uh, uh, park workers on one of the elephants there. That's James Householder. James Householder. Yep. Yep. And this was Tommy Bartlett's. You guys remember the water service in the 80s? See, that's just not old enough to be historical to me. But I know. It is. it is. It is. Makes me old, too. I know. About, so that's um, really great. Porcus Island. Yeah, Porcus it's on Island. Here. It's on here. Do we have a photo of it, though? I don't know that we have a photo. Yeah, right here. Sure do. Oh, right there in front of me. Yep, yep. yep. We've got Archie, Archie Campbell's Village on there. And you know what? The car museum just recently is no longer there. It was there for a long time, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so. so this is a great one, and one of my favorite stories about, and I know you all appreciate this. I, we don't put this slide in for everybody, but the historical folks we know. Sometimes, well, the grade schools at one point was up next to the Fort Ware Game Park back in that time period for the uh, Pigeon Forge kids, and occasionally the elephant would break out. <laughs> and, I mean, I cannot Go just imagine river, being one of those kids and the elephant, and this shows a baby elephant. It's the only picture that I know of that exists of yeah, that happening. I don't know of another one. And they would head to the river. Yeah. So can you imagine being it happened a more kid? Than once, apparently, it, it from did. what they'd always do around the elephant because she would be crossing the parkway yeah. and they would be heading towards the river. So they had chimpanzees there. They had just they just had everything there. It was fascinating. Uh, yeah. Oh, they had a reptile. I was thing. thinking they had a reptile. They had a snake. Thing. Yes. It was. Uh, yeah. It was definitely. And nobody, including the Ware family, have any idea why it had the e on the end of it. They spell W E A R E. Yeah, we don't know if that's just a mistake. Somebody, like they smell, spell smoky wrong. Maybe. They do, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We, don't know. we don't know. I'm sure it was yeah. supposed to be for Fort Ware. Yeah. Did you have Fort Pasile and those things? Yeah, we, we did have Fort Pasile. You know it. Can't, can't forget Go ahead and ask us and see if we <laughs> saw it here because that's what. Well, there were some others too that we had a hard time that we did, that didn't make the marker like Fairyland. Do y'all remember Fairyland? Oh, no, no, we talked about yes. Fairyland. Yes. On the markers? Yeah. yeah. But we don't have a picture of that. No. Well, I'll give back. We yeah. did not get that. We didn't put a picture on there. on there, but there were some ones we ran across yeah. doing this one that we really there had a hard time meeting. Little attractions in Pigeon Forge over yeah. the years. There yeah. definitely have been. Well, we just wanted to share that photo with you and thank you all for having us today. It's already know that was a lot. And that was fast. And, yeah. Yeah. Now, do you all have a marker up or a string tab? I've heard my father-in-law talk. It about is incorporated. Yes, it is yeah. incorporated in early Pigeon Forge. It sure is. Yeah, okay. Is. Do does know does everybody know what String Town is? Okay. From the old mill, the little river road that cuts right beside the parkway where it's not B, B and T anymore, whatever that bank is, Truist, right through there, mm -hmm. that's where all the houses were. It was just a string of houses and they just called it String Town. They were white farmhouses mm -hmm. up and down. And when you look back at those photos, we have some nice photos uh, in the archives in Pigeon Forge. Yeah, area. and there's some good pictures here that's very hard to see. That today. show that little yeah. that little string of houses and it was yeah. we lived in Because that's town. where town was. And so that's why like I'm saying, five or six of our markers are right there. Mm -hmm. I guess Mill Creek, Pine Grove, and Brody are out the furthest, aren't they? Probably. Everything yeah. else is. Everything else is. Now the attractions, oh, this is what's funny. I can't believe we forgot that, Christina. We put the attractions marker where Fairyland was, mm -hmm. and we do mention it, but there's only one or two pictures we've ever found that they're very odd and they're kind of freaky looking, actually. But um, Christina just changed her brochure to say, formerly, the former Krispy Kreme, because we did say in front of Krispy Kreme as you're going to get on the spur. Yeah, again, this so that's where the attraction is. Geared towards tourists that don't know you guys. Because know. Krispy Kreme closed last week, so. Oh. <laughs> yes, yep. didn't know that either, huh? So, yeah. so. The, old, the new Krispy Kreme? In, yeah, the upper end of Pigeon Forge, but that's where yeah, right right It's right very easy to park right there and pull right, right into it. Right. Yeah, so. You know, where that Cracker Barrel was, was the uh, drive in theater, Midway Theater there, and yeah. Remax was right in front of it. So this is just down a few yeah. few hundred feet just from yeah, there. Underway to the spur. Yeah, yeah, but that that is right. We did put the, we did put it where Fairyland was, and I had forgotten that until yeah. you said that. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, so anyway, we appreciate you guys. That's all we today. got. That's we appreciate y'all spending so part of your Sunday yeah. afternoon with us on a hot yeah. summer Sunday. Yeah. Well, thank you.
Thank you, Marcia and Christina, and we want to invite you to stay with us for the next few minutes. We're going to have a few refreshments over here on, on the, my right, my right, your left, I guess. But anyway, if you would, we would like that. And thank you again. Uh, I want to say I, I made a little note. Something that we, as as we get older and our uh, our interest in history increases, typically, we got to remember that the generations below us. They have so many more diversions and things that, that can interest them that history is not top priority for most of them. No. So, but but uh, you, a comment that was made at the beginning of the program here says, if you want to create interest in history, we must relate history to things that the current generation already knows and remembers. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be increasingly difficult to do because they're not getting very much in the schools and they're not making nearly the historical visits that they used to when we were in school. And so we're, our work is cut out for us. Well, and that's one reason that they, they decided to make those markers look the way they look. They're colorful. They're not boring. They're not those, you know, rubbed off they're metal beautiful. layers. They're almost you know, like 3D, really. They're fun to read. They're easy to read. They're easy to spot. They're big. And hopefully that will attract more more people to, to be interested to read them. Very good. Well, let's thank them one more time. <laughs>